so let's uh, start the important topic in pediatrics and the beauty of this topic is that it is very simple and it is very easy to understand and every year you get at least minimum one question in each exam from this topic so moving on to the topic next slide so what diarrhea it is defined as three more than three stools per day or any change in the consistency so based on the types it can be inflammatory and non inflammatory in inflammatory diarrhea you know it is due to various toxins released and whereas in non oh, sorry in inflammatory diarrhea you see the invasive bacteria or damage to the muco mucosal layer whereas in non inflammatory there will be a release of toxins based on the clinical presentation it is acute uh, diarrhea dysentery persistent and chronic diarrhea and the details of this are next slide so acute diarrhea here you have to there are some catch points and you have to notice acute diarrhea is it is less than 14 days and there is no visible blood whereas in dysentery you have a visible blood in the feces and it is mostly associated with anorexia weight loss and damage next so persistent diarrhea the next type is it is diarrhea which lasts more than 14 days you have to note this uh, duration because it is a very important mcq bit it's more than 14 days and it is presumed to have an infectious etiology and this coming to chronic it is more than 14 days but there is non infectious etiology so the most important difference between these two is infectious etiology and the non infectious etiology and etiology the most common cause of the uh, diarrhea it is usually viral in origin and the most important one is the rota virus as you all know rota virus it is the most common cause of the diarrhea and you have a, also a vaccine for this rota virus and it is a oral vaccine and bacterial causes this is most important or the most common bacteria causing this acute watery diarrhea is e coli and in this e coli you have various strains like enterotoxigenic e coli enterohemorrhagic and enteropathogenic and enterotoxigenic is the most common cause of acute watery diarrhea whereas enterohemorrhagic and enteropathogenic it is most common cause of bloody diarrhea and whereas enteroaggregative and enteroadherent diarrhea adherent they are the most common cause of persistent diarrhea and shigella it is most common cause of dysentery and the species of shigella is shigella flexneri and parasitic diarrhea it is mostly seen in the immunocompromised next so uh, other non infectious causes are like malabsorption diet and anatomical difference these are less important and coming to the pathogenesis you have four types of diarrheas based on the pathogenesis secretory asthmatic inflammatory and motility secretory is abnormal secretion of sodium water into the small bowel and the typical example is toxin induced diarrhea whereas asthmatic diarrhea you have poorly absorbed and asthmatically active substances in the diet in the small bowel so it causes the asthmatic diarrhea and the typical example is lactose intolerance so here i want to mention about the lactose intolerance so lactose intolerance what happens is because of this disaccharide deficiency this lactose intolerance occurs and uh, the disaccharide is lactase so the main treatment part of this lactose intolerance diarrhea is you know dietary modification inflammatory diarrhea that is invasion shigella enterohemorrhagic motility diarrhea because of the defects in the gi system like hirschsprung chronic constipation which is followed by the diarrhea so among this secretory and asthmatic are important for the mcqs so moving on to next slides the markers of secretory diarrhea here the most important thing is the stool is of an alkaline large volume stool these are to be noted and there is no effect with discontinuation of the feeding so in the next slide we'll discuss asthmatic diarrhea next so in the asthmatic diarrhea what happens is child is often stable stool uh, sodium is less and there is a acidic ph so stool is positive for the reducing substance look for this word in the mcq and discontinuation of the feed results in the improvement 
and there is also a perennial excoriation this is mainly due to uh, deficiency of the lactase what it causes is production of the lactic acid and this lactic acid is responsible for perianal excoriation and abdominal descent these you know these are all the catch points in those mcqs next so this is the most important slide in the topic of diarrhea here the diarrhea is divided into like no de based on no dehydration some dehydration and severe dehydration so in this there are various catch points they look simple english but it is important to solve the mcq so looking at the condition like well alert restless irritable and lethargic babies and when you go to ice normal in no dehydration some dehydration sunken ice and severe dehydration very sunken ice so an important thing which you know we frequently miss is skin pinch it goes back quickly in no dehydration slowly in some dehydration and very slowly that is more than 2 seconds in severe dehydration so based on these slides these these uh, clinical features we divide that next and also based on whether the sodium is lost more or the water like proportional loss of sodium and water we have isotonic hyponatremic and hypernatremic if the sodium is lost proportionate loss then it is isotonic more loss of sodium than water it is hyponatremic and more loss of water it is hypernatremic and the most common is the isotonic so in the hypernatremic uh, dehydration it is the most dangerous form of dehydration because it affects the brain cells so causes the cell shrinkage and all and uh, you have to treat it very slowly to avoid cerebral edema and high uh, cerebral brain hemorrhage so this is an mcq most complications are seen with this coming to the treatment part we have you know no treatment for no dehydration some and it is different so the main stay of the treatment of the diarrhea is ors ors and ors here in the ors this is we have various formulations like standard hypoosmolar low sodium the homemade fluids these homemade fluids are like rice kanji dal water with salt sugar water with salt and all and also zinc supplement is i believe uh, discussing about in the later slides next so he, this is a slide which shows composition of the ors so here the important thing you know standard ors low or smaller ors and resmol each and every numerical is important in this because it it can be asked in an mcq so the most important for us is low or smaller ors is odd molarity what is this? and here the glucose and the sodium are same and chloride potassium and base so it, it is easy to remember 75 75 you do minus 10 it is 65 and if you add plus 10 to 10 it is 20 so it is you know quite easy to remember than other and also resmol it is used in the dehydration or diarrhea and malnourished children so the iv fluids which are used are ringer lactates and normal sal and the components of fluid recovery so whenever we are giving the fluid therapy to the dehydrated uh, children we have three things what is a deficit fluid and what is a maintenance deficit so we have to give a deficit fluid also the maintenance fluid and ongoing this deficit fluid some dehydration uh, it is 3 to 8% so 30 to 80 ml per kg severe it is more than 9% dehydration deficit it is called severe then 100 ml per kg so maintenance fluid it is calculated using a famous holiday zephyr formula and you have to know this also like 100 ml per kg per day for first 10 kg 50 ml and then 20 ml this ongoing losses by 10 ml per, per stool some dehydration you have to treat with ors 75 ml per kg over 4 hours and we have to see other things are the same for all dehydrations yeah next so severe dehydration the mcq in this is you know we have to give iv fluids for severe dehydration so if the child presents with a shock you need to give boluses so iv fluids is less than 1 year in the first 30 ml per kg in the first hour and 70 ml per kg in the 5 hours next 5 hours whereas more than 1 year and you have to give it in 30 minutes and then 2 and 1/2 hours 
So if you have no IV line, then you can go for NG and intraosseous. And we have to continue the nutrition. We have to uh, continue the ORS if the child is able to take it. So zinc supplementations. Here, what is most important is what is it promotes early recovery and improves immunity. And it is the 10 mg per K per day. And it is not 10 mg per kg. It is 10 mg per day in less than six months and 20 mg per day in more than six months. And duration is 14 days. So probiotics, there are no proper guidelines whether to give the probiotics or not. So probiotics are non-pathogenic microorganisms. Various probiotics used are like lactobacillus, bifidobacteria, and saccharomyces. Among this, you know, saccharomyces, it is used in antibiotic-induced diarrhea. It... And it reduces the diarrhea Diarrhea in most of the cases, and we don't recommend any anti uh, diarrheals in infants and children. So, indication of antibiotics are uh, usually unnecessary in most cases, and they are indicated in infants under less than six months of age, immunocompromised infants, and there is a clinical suspicion of bacteria, malnourished children, and chronic diarrhea. So moving on to food poisoning, it has more MCQs in this also. So symptoms are vomiting, diarrhea, bloody stools, and there is a history of eating outside. And it is mostly due to preformed toxin or the bacteria produces the toxin or the invades mucosa. So in this, uh, we have to report the, uh, remember the incubation period and also the symptoms. Various incubation periods for the difference and mostly asked is Staph aureus and Bacillus series where the incubation period is uh, like one to six hours and botulism toxin, it is 18 to 24 hours. So I would like to ask few MCQs. So a five-year-old boy passed 18 stools and last 24 hours and vomited twice and last four hours. He's irritable but drinking fluid. So here the catch point is irritable. So his dehydration status is some dehydration. So an infant with diarrhea treated with inappropriately diluted ORS presents with irritable cry and duffy skin turgor. So here the catch point is irritable cry and duffy skin turgor which points towards hypernatremic dehydration. Two-year-old child is brought with history of chronic diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal distension. His weight and height is less and he's HLA DQ positive. So this points towards a malabsorption syndrome and especially a celiac disease. So malabsorption, what it causes? Chronic diarrhea. Yeah. So features of secretory diarrhea include all of the following except so there is an increased tool volume, normal osmotic anion grab, but it does not, there is no role of food with secretory diarrhea. So option is C. Thank you.